What's going on here guys? Figured I'd do an update video with the improved system. Um, the improved ringer. Basically what powers it up is a 14 volt DC supercapacitor. Runs through an amp meter. And I've got the input draw down to it extremely low. I've got it very fine tuned. Um, powers up a switching transistor. It gives off a lot of wireless power. It's wound on a met glass laced ferrite rod. And talking to chat, chat deep GPT, I found out that each time that field collapses, the ferrite rod, the exotic met glass ferrite rod, sucks in a bit of energy from the ambient environment, um, which gives off a little bit of wireless power extraction. I also connected this is. This coil is acting as an antenna to suck in more environmental energy. It's connected to the high frequency AC output of the ringer. Hopefully you can see that connection. Just to the outputs. We also grounded one end of the ringer which makes it much more efficient. Um, you then have to send that power through a full bridge rectifier composed of 1N5822 diodes. The high frequency will rapidly recharge a capacitor bank and I'll show you the correct way to use this power so this will silence the skeptics and shut them all up because this is a radio rod the most advanced in the world you can get this type of ferrite rod laced with met glass uh, type 77 met glass laced ferrite rod would probably be even more efficient which I'm in the process of getting definitely worth it so I will hook this up and show you what it can do and I will also be running it off a 9 volt battery. We are now on. Circuit is consuming virtually no power. I'll just get that in frame and show you. I'm going to disconnect the positive and reconnect and show you how much of a minimal drain we have. So you see that? Circuit by itself virtually drains no power. We're using about 100 milliamps. So we're using 100 milliamps. We have wireless power that can be exploited. We can capture this wireless power in other receiver coils. I can take this receiver coil, put it here, experiment with another rectifier, combine the output, I can, I can literally take wires from this output, run it to this rectifier, have more power. So now here's our output. The ringer is powered up. This is acting as an additional antenna, sucking in more power from the environment. We earth grounded to my heater, one of the outputs. There's our power draw, 100 milliamps. Here's our voltage. And I'll show you the incorrect way to use this, which is where a lot of people get confused and go wrong. Incorrect way to use this that will cause a power draw. You run your load directly off the ringer. Um. So that's the incorrect way to use the ringer. We saturated the core, you hear it ringing. And we're drawing power. That is the incorrect way to use the ringer. This is the correct way to use the ringer. Correct way to use the ringer is to get yourself a large DC capacitor bank. Connect this capacitor bank. I'm filming all this real time one handed so nobody can complain. And connect that capacitor bank. It'll draw power for a split second, build up a charge. Virtually no input drain. Once our capacitor bank hits. 100 volt DC, we will start playing with it.
Is our capacitor bank being rapidly charged by the high frequency? At virtually no power draw. This part of the circuit now will output more power over time than your input. And you would use a special pulse timing circuit now from your capacitor bank. You then send this capacitor bank power through through a step down. The uh, That DC capacitor bank that builds up its power to 100 volts then gets stepped down to 12 or 14 volts DC sent through a timer and pulse discharged into super caps that then power up an inverter and run whatever you want. So I'm literally explaining it to you the correct way to use it and if people still don't understand that then that's their own problem. So we're charging up a cap bank, 95 volts, virtually no input draw. You're seeing it plain as day right here. We still have wireless power to play with. Now I will connect my bulb. This is the correct way now to use the power. Use it in pulses and we will not even affect the input. So I'll zoom right in on that when we do a pulse. virtually no drain so this is the correct way you accumulate the high frequency from the ringer will rapidly recharge a capacitor bank here's our charge in the cap bank you can see that right here I just don't like the fact my hand is in the way here we go see everything right here look how fast that recharges correct way to use the ringer and imagine if we do a 0 0.1 second pulse discharge of power every three seconds and we're still accumulating a charge and again no drain on our input So I'm showing you the correct way to use this circuit. There can't be any complaints, any whining, any people confused. And I didn't even uh, optimize this to make that cap bank charge significantly quicker. I didn't even take the output of a receiver coil here, connect another rec, connect the output of this to the rectifier, and that cap bank would charge even quicker with no drain to our input because we still have wireless power coming off of this thing and I grabbed the one blown wireless receiver we still have wireless power coming off this thing I don't know why I still keep this, this one's blown junk pile it is with you but yeah look at this so yeah Build up a full charge in those babies again. And again, you use it by pulsing. Next, I will drain the capacitor bank. Disconnect my battery. Or my super cap, sorry. I'll often get the terms battery and super cap confused because I switch between them so much. So, now... I'll run the ringer off of this and blow your mind. This will really hurt people's heads. So, here we go. We'll wait till this builds up a significant charge from our 9 volt source and we will pulse play with a bulb and this probably because it's off 9 volts it might not build up of the same charge it did off of 14 volts it might get to like 60 or 80 volts I'm not sure and we still got wireless power to play with off a 9 volt battery
minimal current draw, almost nothing. And I noticed the larger your super cap or the bigger your battery, the plates have something to do with it with more radiant energy collection. So I would like the best experts of the world in electrical engineering to analyze this system and tell me I'm wrong because I have the most advanced version of chat GPT helping me design it and perfect it and it's already extreme over unity output undeniably again that's the charge we're building up in this capacitor bank the only reason it's charging slow is because we have a 9 volt battery if I put two in series it would probably charge even quicker let's see if I have another one I can get well no 9 plus 9 would be yeah it would be too high it would damage the system and it would overcharge those caps um I'll show you something else amazing too this circuit can power up bright LED spotlights for a time run halogen bulbs you shouldn't even be able to do this with a 9 volt battery drawing virtually no power and again I can pulse this and again draw virtually no power from the source so let the skeptics and trolls suck on that here is a 120 volt AC 9 watt spotlight off a 9 volt battery Strong virtually no power because we're running off the capacitor bank. The system will also reach an equilibrium where you can run a load from it without draining the source. And you will still have wireless power effects off a 9 volt battery. So it's getting to the point where you'll have a device that'll be portable and can run anything. And like I said, you then take that power, send it through that circuitry, steps to 100 volts DC down to 12 or 14 volts DC. Pulse discharges it into a battery bank or capacitor bank that then powers up an AC inverter, 120 or 240 volt AC, and you're, you're, you're good to go. You have more power output over time than your input drain. You can keep the source, the input source, fully powered in addition to running loads. So, you're seeing it right here. You can calculate the math all yourself. Here's the input drain. And we're still giving off wireless power. And in case you don't think that analog amp meter is accurate in any way, I will connect this 40 watt incandescent. And that 9 watt 120 volt AC LED spotlight bulb was being run off the charge accumulation on the capacitors. As you see, those guys always want to recharge. It's over 100% efficient wireless power transfer on the uh, on the coils that are wound on the, the ferrite rod, the metacalacylase ferrite rod. And it occurs because as the field collapses, it harnesses more excess power from the environment because of the material the rod's made out of. And we grounded it for more efficiency. Here we go running a heat bulb I'll let it leave it connected long enough to drain power from the source and we saturate the core and it's ringing and that is the incorrect way to run it and again I will now hook this up to the 14 volt DC supercapacitor I demonstrated to you we could run this off of such a tiny source There we go. We are drawing power. Amp meter clearly works. I'll disconnect. We'll build up a charge rapidly. Once this hits 100 volts, we'll we then play with pulse discharging it. And I'm pretty sure I can get that screen to light up. Yeah, there we go. It's much better. So there we go, I'm demonstrating you, to you all the properties of the ringer. Again, I sell it 150 bucks. you just get the ringer, not the wireless antenna slash broadcast coil. This is just to further enhance the system. Um, 
the ringer alone can do anything you want and give you all the power you need. I sell it for 150 bucks plus shipping. More of these exotic rods are coming on the way. Here's our input draw. Virtually nothing. The lowest I've had it. Virtually no input. And we're rapidly recharging a capacitor bank that stores energy and turns energy into work. And again, we can use that power. Do whatever the hell we want. So, I demonstrated to you everything in this video. See it rapidly recharging. Still have wireless power to play with. So, I didn't even hook up that capacitor bank yet to my timing circuitry. That would step the 100 volt DC down to 14 volt DC. Pulse discharge it for 0 0.1 seconds every 2 seconds into a 14 volt DC battery or super cap that then powers up an inverter to run whatever you want so I explained to you how it works there's a more power output over time than your input drain and the excess comes from the accumulation of power from the environment being sucked into the mech glass laced ferrite rod type 77 and we also grounded it there's also wireless power coming off of the ground which is very interesting so I'd like the best electrical engineers in the world to explain this to me we are sucking power out of the earth we have access we can dump it into batteries caps power up inverters do whatever the hell we want with it it even lights on large metal objects in my room still maintain the radiant energy effect so all skeptics can reproduce it. Schematics on my Patreon for free. Anyone doubts it, you can build it yourself. You might just have to wait a month if you order the ferrite, the Met Glass Lace Type 77 ferrite rod from China. Um, but yeah, that's what's making it tick. The exotic ferrite rod. And again, look at that power that we can play with. No input drain. You can literally harvest, make a bunch of wireless power harvesters, collect all this wireless energy, and again, have it go into that rectifier, and it would charge even quicker. Demonstrating that to you fully, there can be no argument. So, that's how it looks. I don't have any source of AC power up here. The system runs itself. I then have to hook up my timing circuit. Pulse discharge that into one of these guys. And then use... Power up a DC to DC boost converter. And recharge my source. And it, it, it never runs down. I'm going to set up a model soon that is just running 24-7 live feed camera. In my work shed. I'm going to set that up as well as uh, some of the crystal power cells running an LED light nonstop. So, explain to you how it works. Now, I will disconnect the driving input battery. I mean, the driving input super cap. So, the system now has no power except for the charge it accumulated in the capacitors. And there's your more output power over time than the input drain. So that's that. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, join the Patreon, support us. Even if you don't join the Patreon, there's a complete archive of electrical information on it. All in one spot, free to access, free to download. Schematic for the Ringer 4.0. The schematic is up there too for the Ringer. Ringer 4 and 5.0 coming out soon. Key is that exotic rod. And... Yeah, and I sell them for 150 bucks a pop, a ringer. So stay tuned. And thank you, everybody.